Welcome to another video. Let's solve this equation. No, no. Let's find this equation because what we're given is a function and we're not supposed to find x. Remember, we're not looking for x. The question says find f of x. This is what you call a functional equation. Now, similar to a differential equation where you're given some differentiation of the function. So it's called differential equation because you're looking for the actual function, but they gave you the derivative of the function in some form. Along with some other things, you find it. This what you call integral equation where they give you the integral of the function in some form, but you're supposed to find the actual function. So in this case, we are given a modification of the function, but we're supposed to find the actual function. So this is a functional equation and it is something you should try to attack every time, especially if you're a calculus student because it improves your algebra tremendously. Let's get into it. Here is my suggestion. Whenever you get a functional equation, if it is just one single function that is involved in it, like this one, try to plug in a very uh, convenient number and see what you get on the right hand side so that when you get your final answer, you can test it and see how it works. So this is what I usually do. I would say, I want to make this equal to zero. Okay. So when this is zero, I want to know what's going to happen on this side, because when I get my answer, it's easy to plug in zero. Okay. So if I want to make this argument zero, what I'm going to do is, um, I know the denominator can't be zero, but I can make the numerator equal to zero by making X to be negative two. So if I assume that X is negative two, it's going to be negative two plus two, which gives me zero over negative four. So this is f of zero. So I'm going to be having, watch this, it's going to be f of negative two plus two over negative two minus two. And here it's going to be negative two squared plus four times negative two plus four divided by eight times negative two. Here I know I have f of zero. And here I'm going to evaluate, I'm going to get 4 minus 8 plus 4. That gives me 0 on top. And down here is negative 16, so equals 0. So I know that by the time I get my final answer, I'm going to have f of x is equal to something. But when I plug in 0 in that function, I'm going to get 0. That's a quick test for me to know that. Okay, this function I just claimed I got may be true. Now, just to be sure, you should try two or three different um, values to make the argument of this before you start. Okay, so how do you start? This is a very easy one because you only have a single function. In the more complicated ones, you're gonna have f of this and you have another f defined in another way. So the number of steps you're going to take will be um, multiple. But this is a very easy step. And what should you do? The only thing I would recommend is replace everything in here with another letter. That is the strategy. So we're going to say let t, I like using t, be equal to x plus 2 over x minus two. Okay, so that when I write this function next, I'm going to say f of t, and that's it. But the right hand side is going to go crazy. Why? Because we have to replace x with t. Okay, so if we say t equals x plus two over x minus two, well, we need to um, isolate x so we can go replace it with something in terms of t. So let's um, um, clean this up. So we're going to have um, t times x minus 2 will be equal to x plus 2. And then we have um, xt minus 2t equals x plus 2 
put all the x's together, we got xt minus x will be equal to 2t plus 2, so that x will be equal to, let's factor, x, um, we have t minus 1 equals 2t plus 2, and what do we have left? We've got x will now be equal to 2t plus 2 over t minus 1. This is the key to where we're going. Once you've been able to replace x with this letter t that we use as substitute, now we're going to say f of t will be equal to, instead of writing x squared plus 4x plus um, 4 over 8x, everywhere you see x, you're going to replace it with this. You simplify and you get your function. So let's go back to what we have to do. This is now f of t. So we're going to say f of t is equal to x squared. But we said x is this now. So I'm going to write this. I'm going to square this. Okay. This looks like 2t t2. T, t, no, but it's 2t plus 2. Okay. So I'm going to factor out the 2 and just write this as t plus 1 over t minus 1. So this is going to be 2 times t plus 1 over t minus 1, everything squared. That is x squared. I'm going to go to the next one and say plus. This is going to be 4x. That's going to be 4 times 2 times x plus 1 over x minus, oh sorry, not x, t. t plus 1 over t minus 1. Okay. And uh, plus 4. All divided by 8 times 2 times t plus 1 over t minus 1. Okay. So what do we get here? Nothing special, nothing strange. Just do pure algebra. Let's simplify and see what we get. If we square everything here, we're going to end up with... 2 squared is 4, and this is going to be t plus 1. You know what? I'm going to square each of them. t plus 1 squared over t minus 1 squared. Nice. Plus, 4 times 2 is 8, so I'm going to write 8 here and write t plus 1 over t minus 1. Okay, I'm going to put it, let's just do it this way, plus 4, and everything here is divided by 16 times t plus 1 over t minus 1. Let's separate them. Okay, let's do it this way, just leave it that way. Now, we're almost done if only we can just look at what we have and say, hey, I have too many fours, or I have fours everywhere. So, so divide the top and bottom by four. That's one step. I want to do many things at the same time because I want us to get to our answer. Now, also, look at all, the, this is a complex fraction. Look at all the denominators that you have. You got t minus one is a denominator here. t minus one squared is a denominator here. T minus 1 is a denominator here. So if we pick the highest denominator on top and on the bottom, everything looks like, yeah, T minus 1 squared is what we should use. I'm going to be multiplying everything by T minus 1 squared, and I will be dividing everything by 4. So this is what I'm going to do. I am going to multiply by T minus 1 squared over 4. That takes care of most of the things I'm worried about right now. So let's begin. If I use this to multiply this, this t minus 1 squared will cancel this out, and this 4 will cancel this 4. So what I have left is just t plus 1 squared. That's it. And then we go to plus. We go here. If I, this will cancel out one of these, what I have left will be t minus 1. I use it to multiply this. 
it's going to give me, oh, the fours should go actually. This four should take care of this four. This four should take care of this and you have two. So I'm going to have two and then I'm going to have T plus one times one of these, which is T minus one. And then this takes care of this and I'm going to have T minus one squared plus T minus one squared. And all of these will be divided by. So this four is going to take care of this. Remember, this means I'm doing it to the top and the bottom. So I'm going to have four left here. And then this will take care of one of these. The other one is going to be T plus one, T minus one. Okay. So we're almost there because now I can rewrite everything that I, in fact, let me just do it. It's going to be crazy. Okay. But hey, this is difference of two squares. So let's just do this. So if I write this, what I have here is four times the difference of two squares, which is going to be T squared minus one. That's another way to rewrite this, but let's work on the top because the top is the part that's insane. So if I distribute this, what do I get? I'm going to get T squared plus two T plus one. Go here. Oh, this is difference of two squares. It looks exactly like this and I need to multiply it by two. So it's going to be plus two T squared minus two. That's what this is going to give us because it's this one multiplied by two. And if I go here, well, I'm going to do the same expansion. It's going to be two squared minus two T plus one. It's not as bad as I was thinking. Come on, that was, that was an exaggeration. Let me see if I can squeeze in some, something on that side. What can we do here? I know that one plus one minus two is zero. So all the numbers are gone, right? One plus one minus two gives me zero. Now let's go. I know that 2t minus 2t is gone. Now I have t squared plus 2t squared plus t squared. I got 4t squared. So this is 4t squared over what's in the bottom? 4 into t squared minus 1. That's f of t. This is normal. It means I found my answer. Remember, the reason we did this substitution is because we don't want this crazy thing in the argument. You just want a single letter. I could have written my letter as f of x or f of y or f of z. So don't worry about this t. Just say that f of x is equal to, I'm changing the letter that I'm using because it's my choice equals 4x, sorry, we got to cancel. This cancels this, and what do you have left? Don't mess it up, Newton. That's going to be x squared divided by x squared minus 1. This is the function we've been looking for. Done. Now let's go back and check. Remember I said if I plug in 0 at the final end, at the very end, I should get zero. What is f of zero? It's going to be zero over minus one, which is zero. So that check is right. I think I'm happy with what I did. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.